We're talking about the outcomes of the elections, the parliamentary elections in uh, Lesotho, and we pick up that conversation now. To understand the deeper themes at play, we are joined by National University of Lesotho Senior Lecturer, Dr. Tlohang Letsia. Good evening to you, uh, Dr. Letsia, and welcome. Take us a step back. What are some of the major fault lines in Lesotho politics that have historically been fueling the political instability? Well, thank you very much, and uh, welcome to your uh, viewers. Uh, I think up to this point, we can say that the elections have gone fairly well uh, with a lot of stability that we saw yesterday. So we are not expecting, at least at this point in time, uh, not any instability. There are no signs as yet. What are the historical instabilities and fault lines in politics there? <laughs> uh, normally, uh, we have had political instability emanating mostly after the announcement of the election results. Uh, during the initial phases, we, we really never have any problems. And you'll find that in most cases, the instability emanates from the dissatisfaction of people who might have not been able to make it to, to Parliament, not necessarily because of any uh, significant uh, complaints and so on and so forth. So until this time, like I said earlier, we are not expecting to see any theme much. But the constitutional backdrop gives us a hint of some of those inherent uh, problems because there was a raft of reforms proposed and passed before the elections called the Omnibus Constitutional Bill, and that was intended to usher in a new era of stability. And before we talk about whether they will ever see the light of day, tell us more about what they are aiming to achieve. Uh, mo mo mostly, the, the omnibus bill that you are talking about was a result of the national reforms process that was initiated some years back uh, by Lesotho and its uh, foreign developmental partners. So it is aimed mostly to hold all these sorts of instability that uh, have kept Lesotho unstable for a number of times. But talking to uh, elections-related issues specifically, there were a number of issues that it were aimed at uh, dealing with. Uh, for instance, if I make just a few examples, it was meant to try to regulate floor crossing. We have had a lot of problems resulting from uh, floor crossing in the suit. So it was uh, meant to try to regulate that such that uh, MPs would only be allowed to cross the floor once uh, after three years. Apart from that, it was meant to uh, come up with a threshold uh, for attainment of parliamentary seats, PR seats, because we have seen in most cases you'll find these smaller parties that benefit from the compensatory element of our model coming into parliament, and they are the, the parties that most of the time are causing problems because their members can cross over a uh, to other parties. So there were, there were quite a number of uh, such uh, problems that it was meant to address. However, it failed to pass, like we've already said about it, but we are still hopeful that uh, the coming 11th parliament might want to revisit that and then uh, enact such laws. And, and that was going to be my, my next question, because as you've just said now, there was a decision of the High Court there that a previously declared state of emergency and uh, reconvening of parliament uh, null, null and void, it was declared null and void. So all the laws passed by this uh, recalled parliament are also now declared null and void. And so the prospects for the omnibus constitutional bill to be passed, I suppose, hangs in the air. But given that that is the backdrop, there seems to be a sincere pledge to honor the results of the polls. Do you believe, uh, Dr. Letsia, that there is and that Lesotho might be on the cusp of a changed and stable future? Yeah, I'm not sure whether you are following the latest developments now, because uh, starting from, I think, around uh, 12 o'clock this afternoon, we began to see the announcement of the election results. I have to say we are having a shock results. Shock results in the, uh, in the sense that uh, almost everybody had predicted a coalition government. But now, as things are, 
the newly established uh, Revolution for Prosperity, RFP, by, uh, under the leadership of Matikani, seems to be sweeping almost everything. Until the point when I came to this interview, there were, I think, about uh, 11 con uh, constituencies that were already announced, and it had won all of them. And the chances are that it's going to win more. So I think that brings an element of hope because most of the people that are coming in into parliament with uh, RFP are new members altogether. So uh, we, we are hopeful that they will want to consider and try to correct the wrongs of the past parliament. We were somehow worried that uh, most of those people who were in the previous parliament would come back. These are the people who did not seem to care much about the reforms. But now we are somehow hopeful that uh, they might want to revisit that as soon as the parliament opens and then pass the laws because they are very, very critical for the stability of this country. Yeah. You, have, you have certainly answered the question I was asking, which is why I'm concerned, maybe given the connectivity issues, you didn't hear me uh, correctly in the question. I, I was in fact asking that very question about there being a sincere pledge to honor the results of the polls and the possibility that Lesotho now is on the cusp of, uh, you know, of being on a path to stability. What would you say, Dr. Letsi, should be the first priority of the, you know, of the new leaders? Well, I, I, I think uh, maybe before I get to what, what I think about what should be the, the first priority, go back a little bit to the pledge that you talked about. Yes, we have seen in a number of incidences in the past where leaders pledge to honor the election results. And they did this time around, and we are expecting that they are going to honor them. But like I said, we are having shock results that might uh, cause some uh, problems within the parties because uh, these bigger parties have, have really been beaten very, very hard. But now, coming to the priority, I think what has to be priority of the leaders uh, will be determined by an assessment of their uh, voters. Mostly, uh, this party has been voted uh, by the youth because for the first time, the issue of economy was uh, a, poly a electoral issue. So I think the very, very first thing that they have to try to tackle is to try to create job opportunities. With job opportunities around, I think it will be easier for people to have patience for other things. Uh, but you, as they say, you know that uh, an empty stomach that does not have an ear. So if there are no visible uh, employment opportunities, people are still without income, the poverty remains as rife as it is now, they will soon ex uh, experience a lot of problems. So I think the first priority has, be, has to be job creation. Some really interesting perspectives there. Uh, I look forward, uh, Dr. Letzia, to one day interviewing you in person or have our reporter interview you in person in Lesotho to share some of these, um, these insights that you're sharing. And very profound saying you quote there around, uh, you know, an, an empty stomach having no ear, that that has to be the initial priority is how people can activate their agency um, to get jobs and, and, and to have a life of dignity. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your analysis. Thank you. The National University of Lesotho Senior Lecturer, Dr. Tlohang Letsie.